Hey there, Bridge family. It's Pastor Jeff, and I'm coming to you today with a very heavy heart. I'm coming asking each and every one of you to offer up your intercessory prayers and your sacrificial support for our family in Uganda. We are seeing what I would have said in the past was an unprecedented emergency. But you see, we're dealing with the COVID virus 2.0. The second wave, what we in the West are saying is the Delta version of the COVID virus. It is now sweeping across Uganda and it is bringing devastation, devastation to both our family members, our bridge family members, and the population at large. Let me explain. For you see, I'm going to ask you to, to pray for the Lord to intercede there, but I'm also asking you to pray about your own personal and family sacrificial support. Because what's happening right now in Uganda is even bigger and worse than what happened the first time COVID went through. We are dealing with a population that at present is only approximately 5% vaccinated. So understand that the vast majority, 95% of the population, never got vaccinated for the first wave of COVID. And now as this second wave is, is sweeping through, it is doing devastation and it is bringing the death toll to horrifying levels. We are dealing with a draconian shutdown. The government has once again, about three weeks ago, just immediately shut down the country without folks having an opportunity to prepare or get supplies. And so if you weren't well stocked and it's near impossible to be well stocked, and if you didn't have a surplus of funds and hardly anybody would ever have a surplus of funds, well, you're dealing with and looking into the face of starvation. And that's happened. Now, in response, praise God, we have been able, the Bridge family, we have fed the Bridge family for the last three weeks. Most of you know that there was a mission trip that was scheduled. I and Brock and Griffin were going to go. And the money that was allocated and set aside for that trip has, in the last three weeks, been consumed in bringing food and medical supplies, some sanitation essentials, and what would be needed to the people. By God's grace, our brother, our servant leader Moses, as a national social worker, has access to the country. Well, for three weeks, Moses has been going around to our 11 locations, and he's been bringing food. All told, it's at the cost of approximately $2,000 a week. Well, I'm coming and asking you right now to pray for the Lord's supernatural intervention and the Lord's intervention through we, his people, that we, the church, would get to be the church and continue to bring loving support, to bring food, to bring medical supplies, to stand in the gap once again, as we did last year, when the COVID virus first swept through and we fed these 167 families for months. We've done it now for three weeks and we're at the place where I, as the servant leader of our Bridge family, I need to come to you and I need to ask you to prayerfully go before the Lord and ask him to do the miraculous work that only he can do. And thank him that he's allowing us to be his instrument of love and light, of help and support. And then pray and ask what the Lord would have you and your family to do in this time. How would you be used as an instrument of help? I realize most of us, we're not sitting on money trees. We're, we're not sitting in the kind of abundance that people would say is easy to, to support things like this. But I would ask you to think on the other hand, think about the need and the trials and the tragedies that our brothers and sisters are facing. And I ask you to ask the Lord to make clear to you how you can stand in the gap, how we can stand in the gap. I want you to know that we are seeing the types of support and sacrifice that is truly inspirational. 
one of our families was kind enough to sacrificially give a wheelchair to young Henry. If you remember Henry and his father, John, who we've already supported through medical, literally through surgeries and physical therapy. One of our families said, we have it on our heart to replace little Henry's wheelchair. We've had others, another family that has said, I have instruments that can help. Here are solar panels that can help to literally make the electricity that can drive the tools that can create the kind of work and support that will not only generate an income, but will literally help people. We can build houses. We can do the things that will make a difference. Many of you have already given financially, sacrificially, and you've been those that God would use to bring food and medicine. I'm not talking to you as though you've not done anything. I'm just bringing to you an awareness of the need that is straight from the mission field. And I'm asking you to give again. I'm asking you to prayerfully go before the Lord and ask him what he would do in you that he would do through you. And I would ask all of us who live in the place of abundance and comfort here in the West, remember that if you live in this country, you're in the top 5% in the world when it comes to what we have in comparison to those who don't have. Just how did Uganda end up in this situation, Larry? Uganda was hoping to get more vaccines, like every other country. They got 964,000, and they put those in the shot of the arms of people. That's why the health ministry here is telling us they only have 20,000 left. They were hoping to get another 175,000 shots by the end of this week, but that's a big if. That is if COVAX can deliver. COVAX is this big global alliance to get vaccines to reach to middle-income and poor countries for free or at a discounted rate. However, in the midst of that, Uganda is having to deal with a vicious second wave of the virus. People are dying in these hospitals, Becky, because they cannot be vaccinated and they cannot stay in lockdown or in restrictions forever. They want to go back to their lives because for many day laborers, if they don't show up to the market, to the bus station, they don't have an income. Now, I can say to you that our family, we are supporting and we are doing the best that we can. It's not as though we're not doing anything. I just want to quote our brother Jordan in his sermon from Sunday. We've been called to exhaust the day, to exhaust the day to the glory of God. It's very difficult to do that in the midst of hurting brothers and sisters if we don't first exhaust the day to come by their side, to be the hands and feet of Jesus to those who desperately need to see him in action. May we be the ambassadors of Christ who step in, not just to teach where teaching has been wrong, not just to bring right where others are doing wrong, but may we be the ambassadors for Christ who step in where the needs are greatest. If the Lord has laid something on your heart or if he does in the next hours or days, please reach out to me directly and let me know as our elder team will be meeting this evening, and as we begin to put together our going forward support plan. If God has laid something on your heart, please let me know so that we can proactively build into the plan what God has provided to you and what God will be providing through you. As always, I want to say thank you for your heart and thank you for wanting to be the people that will one day hear our Lord say, well done, faithful slaves, well done. Amen and amen.